Hello together, my name is Christian Schütte and I'm the writer of the project management blog on the xp.ch. Uh, I would like to introduce the meeting minutes XLS file which I've uh, already shown and explained in this blog and which you can also download in the Digistore shop. So uh, we are using this type of minute taking since more than 10 years in our projects and it uh, has been very helpful in many many situations. So what we're doing is uh, we are capturing all meeting minutes from all team meetings which are uh, team meetings with other teams uh, within the project or with externals in these meeting minutes and for each team there is a certain structure. We do have a P for participants, uh, where we are putting all the participants. We have an A for agenda, which uh, we're using quite optional. So it's not mandatory to have this agenda point in each team, uh, in each meeting. So, but you can do it. Uh, depends what rules you apply in your project. We have an I for information, which is also optional, which is used for information, which may be useful to be shared. Uh, with others and also uh, other people which want to know what has been discussed in this team but it's as I said optional. Uh, what is mandatory is to use D for decisions and record all decisions taken in this meeting and it's important to mention the decision taker which is in this meeting um, and the decision in a manner that it's understandable uh, to others. We also have tasks uh, and there should be the assignee of this task, so who has assigned the task and uh, who is responsible. This is also mandatory. There is only one person and it's one individual person, not a team, not two persons. One person is responsible. This is very important. Uh, there may be one or more supporters. Uh, and there needs to be a due date and the status of this task. So what you can see, there is also some conditional formatting behind this. There is, uh, if you put this task on closed, for example, then uh, it will appear uh, in, in black. And if a task is open or uh, work in progress but overdue then this appears in red the due date so that people can easily see what are the critical tasks and if this task is uh, in the future for example today we do have the 27th then the due date still appears green so um, these rules are also described in the sheet validations and rules. So here you can also uh, change the um, statuses. Here this you should leave because this is for calculating the actual date. And there are the applying rules which I've just explained, which you should um, apply when filling these meeting minutes because this will allow all the team to easily work with these minutes. So if you, for example, create a new meeting, you can just uh, copy uh, the previous one and insert the complete lines and change the date. As I said, today it's the 27th, uh, 20, and my name is Christian Schütter. So I will, uh, and this will allow also for having the opportunity to simply in future meetings follow up on all open tasks by just using this button and filtering on the meeting 
uh, if you have different meetings, you should have some kind of structure in the in the um, naming of the meetings. And so you can easily follow up in all future meetings, which are open tasks from other meetings. So we are going back to all. Then we do have this decision entry. And what we are doing is um, we, are con we are distributing once a month all decisions taken in all meetings to be completely transparent to all stakeholders of the project um, which is including all the management team and uh, all project teams core team other teams uh, in order to make sure that nobody has the idea that decisions are taken in a hidden chamber so we are obviously distributing all decisions even if they are taken taken in small team meetings as soon as they appear in these meeting minutes our PMO once a month is taking these decisions from here just with copy paste and uh, moving it into the decision log file and within the decision log file we do have decisions which are locked uh, where the, the complaint period has passed, which are communicated, which are currently uh, communicated. And what we are doing is once a month, we are distributing the decisions and there is one month period where people can um, get into the details by talking to the one who has taken the decisions. For example, if they need more explanations, they can directly contact, contact the person who has taken this decision. And for a complete understandability, we are also, before communicating the decisions, we are translating those into the local language. So even in most of our projects, as uh, we're located in, in Switzerland, we're working a lot in Switzerland and Germany, our local language is German. But anyway, uh, most often the project language is English. So we are distributing all our decisions in the local language and in the official project language. And when it's distributed, it has a status communicated. And after this four weeks period uh, has uh, is over, the decisions become the status locked. So the complaint period is over. And we're also communicating when distributing those decisions if there is no complaint within this four weeks period. They are accepted and fully supported by everybody who has received these decisions. So this gives us a very, very stable situation for the project work because most projects are failing or suffering because of the reopening of already taken decisions. Sometimes there may be a, a certain good reason because there is a new, uh, we knew new things, but uh, most often uh, it's very important to have a clear log file of decisions and doing it this way, it's very easy. Just everything is just recorded once in this team meetings uh, minutes file and if, for example, somebody is, because all the teams are using this file, if, for example, this, this file is locked by another person, I just go here, open it, copy a local version on my desktop, record uh, real time the minutes in the meeting, and when the file on the central folder, SharePoint or wherever is uh, available again, I just copy my entries by copying the complete lines and um, you will see if I do it like this and enter the complete, fill in the complete lines. So the numbering applies uh, automatically correctly because there is also a formula built in. And another thing is when we have transferred, for example, the decisions to a log file, we are putting the date here of uh, the date of transfer, like if I've transferred today, I would put 
today stayed here that and then everybody knows this decision is already transferred to the log file if you are using for example any kind of collaboration software it would also be a good possibility um, if you move the tasks from here for example into the planner and ms, MS teams and when you have moved a certain task there and assigned it there um, it's also possible uh, to use the same field transfer to log in this case and collaboration software if you don't do this it's also easy what we are doing for the PMO um, to follow up on a regular level we are doing this every week every week our PMO selects open tasks and then uh, only the, the overdue tasks and sends those to each responsible person uh, which is appearing here which has open tasks and so if we are entering something in the minutes it's always processed the follow-up processing is always automated uh, automated process within our project management office so hope this will contribute to the success of your future projects in case you have any question don't hesitate to contact me at info at sapxp.ch good luck and goodbye christian schutte